You are traveling with your bow, hunting for a day, adventuring for a week, or marching for miles during a dreary, drawn-out campaign. How do you carry your bow? Welcome to this episode of the Carrying Stick-Like Objects on Your Back show. And tonight, I knock a jar. Matt holds my beer, and Jillian takes a nap. Right, now as with my first video about carrying spears, I have been prompted to make this video based on a recent Shadowversity video. Um, go watch it, it's amazing, it's wonderful, I'll link to it. The premise of which was this. If Shad was an adventuring medieval fantasy warrior, what weapons would he take with him? First off, he'd prefer to wear a substantial enough amount of armor that he'd feel comfortable foregoing a shield and right away freeing up a lot of inventory space, so to speak. And this left him ultimately torn between two loadouts, a bow and a spear, or a bow and a sword. Now, he definitely wanted the bow, and that's sensible, because ranged weapons are quite useful. They allow you to hit the bad guy or the monster while they're still quite far away. He did fancy about how nice it would be to have a bow and a sword and a spear, but alas, we can't always have what we want. Or can we? Anyways, despite wanting that full-size longbow, he acknowledged that it can be an awkward difficult thing to carry. And he said this, it might need its own dedicated video to explore the various methods to have a strong longbow on your back. Now, I don't mean to steal his ideas. Obviously he might, and I hope he does make his own video about this subject. I just genuinely enjoy doing the experimentation for myself and being even a small part of the conversation that usually goes on between much bigger brains than mine. Bigger brains like Matt Easton's from Scala Gladiatoria, for instance, but more on him later. So my initial purpose of this video was simply to explore the various methods of carrying a longbow on your back, both unstrung and strong. Most importantly, strong. My purpose expanded a bit later, but we'll come to that. For now, roll the film. Right, so I always like to start with the most basic possible method, in this case using only the bow and only a string. How do we carry this thing across your back? So you take one loop and, of the bowstring and you slide it down the length of the shaft until it can't go any further. You go to the other end uh, and then you tie it off uh, in a knot. It's a very simple sling with just the bow and the bowstring, and then you throw that over your shoulder. Some problems with this, of course, is that you subject the bowstring itself to um, some wear and tear, and uh, that's not necessarily ideal. Bowstrings could be valuable, and you certainly don't want yours to break. Um, and as far as uh, uh, unslinging the bow and then getting it ready to string and shoot, um, it's not the most lengthy method of doing so, uh, but you have to take the bow off, you have to untie the string, and then slide it up and, and get it strung. Um, it takes some time. Um, yes, this method uh, is fun. I have taken the bow, and I have wrapped it up in my weatherproof cloak, actually, and I'm lashing it to the quiver and to a bedroll, which you can imagine being filled with all sorts of supplies and rations. Of course, you could do this method without wrapping up the bow, um, but I went ahead and skipped that step and just went straight to covering it. Um, and actually, uh, it's not... It wouldn't necessarily take that long to uh, slide the bow out of the wrapping. Um, so uh, there's that. I was really inspired by this, um, to do this method by looking at Strider in the Fellowship of the Ring when he's journeying through the Midgewater marshes, taking the hobbits to um, Rivendell. And uh, yeah, man, I mean, talk about my aesthetic goals for existence, just being like him looking like Strider. Um, yeah, he's got a very short bow um, tied up with his quiver with his bedroll and some other things. And there's actually an amazing YouTube channel I'm going to link to right here. It's called Fandabi Dozy or something like that. Anyway, this guy is awesome. He goes through all kinds of survivalist techniques, um, looks at historical adventuring and survival um, from medieval times through the olden times. Anyway, uh, he's Scottish, he's awesome, and has been uh, super inspirational and helpful. Um, yeah, so these were the two main methods. Um, uh, one reason you might want to lash the bow and the quiver and the bedroll all together is if you have them all on slings separately, 
uh, you can end up with just this web of slings uh, across your across your shoulder, especially if you've got you know a, a Shad's awesome great sword, baldric over your shoulder, or a polearm sling across over your shoulders. And that's a lot of slings. That's a lot of stuff on your back. Um, so this way, you've just got one sling. And now, carrying your longbow while strung. Why would you want to do that? Well, because you want access to it quickly. If you're out hunting, if you're traveling through a dangerous area, out adventuring, generally, you're gonna want access to your bow and be ready to use it on a moment's notice. The only problem with that is, of course, you're going to fatigue your bow if you keep it strong for too long and it is exposed to the elements and susceptible to wear and tear. I wanna mention horseback just briefly because I found a, a really cool, well, I didn't find it, I found a Reddit post where, which showed me this really cool medieval art of a Mongolian archer with a sheath um, that the bow was standing upright while strung in. And Mongolians, I, they had a couple different sizes of bows. I don't know if any of them were quite as big as the standard medieval uh, English longbow. Um, and that's, of course, it, you know, this whole thing becomes easier, carrying a strong bow if it is a shorter bow. Um, which is perfectly valid. You might want to do that, but we want the big boys. We want that full power. Now, what's commonly depicted in films, I guess, as being strung across the shoulders, and uh, you can, to a point, get away with that. It's not ideal, and again, you're adding stress to the string, and you have to think about what else are you carrying, um, what's getting in the way. So, did I find a way of carrying the longbow while strung conveniently on my back. Well, while I was in the middle of making my video, another one of my favorite YouTubers, Matt Easton of Scala Gladiatoria, dropped a video in a very similar vein as Shad's, and it was titled Medieval Fantasy Realistic Weapon Loadouts. It's another wonderful video. Absolutely love this guy. It's awesome. Now, his preferred loadout ends up a little different from Shad, but like Shad, he has a yearning and a longing to take that longbow with him on an adventure. He turns out to have some pretty strong opinions about how to carry one. And this is where, what I was trying to hint at before about having a polearm and a longbow. Both of these are stick-like objects, and really there is no easy way to carry both of these things. You can't really easily carry a polearm and a longbow. It's not something you can really wear, okay? That's to cut a long story short. And uh, I don't think that anybody in their right mind would want to be carrying a polearm at the same time. So fundamentally, you've got to make a choice. <laughs> are you going to go with a polearm or are you going to go with a missile weapon? It is called the Bow Tote. I did not invent this, I found it. Again, I was on Reddit and someone linked to this incredible, incredible invention. Um, it's modern and I'll link to it so that you can check it out and maybe buy one for yourself. Here's how it works. You have two socks or sheets. Um, the official Bow Tote on the website that I found, it's made out of modern material, I like nylon or something like that. Um, you could very easily imagine making a sick looking hide leather linen medieval version of this. I just ripped apart a t-shirt, stitched it together in two socks, uh, stitched a long string connecting the two, and here's how it works. 
you take your strung longbow and you take one of the socks and let's hope this is in frame. If it's right in front of my face, it should be in frame. All right, we've got one sock on this side and flip it over so you can see. Turn me around bullseye so I can see. Um, the other sock on this side and what we have is a whole new strap basically for our strong longbow. What this is, because um, again, I like to just do everything as basic as possible. I just used a, shrink, a string and it was uh, too long. So to adjust it and make it more comfortable, I twisted it up in the middle and then tied it off. So that is how you carry your strong longbow. What else can you carry with it? So as I go about putting everything back on my back, some closing points. Is it a little absurd? Maybe, but surprisingly simple and surprisingly effective. Um, the order of things uh, makes a big difference. You have the quiver on first because you're never going to need to take that off. Then you put the spear on next uh, so that you can put the bow on last because the bow is going to be the first thing you want to draw while your enemies are still at range. Then as they get close, you throw it away, you grab your spear, and then when push comes to shove, the sword. Um, and yeah, it, it's at its most absurd carrying the shield. That was when I felt like, okay, this is a bit much, this is a bit encumbered, but it still wasn't the worst thing in the world. And having the spear and the bow and the sword, just like Shad wanted, Shad, I'm here to tell you, you want it all, you can have it all. And as far as Matt Easton's comment that you couldn't be in your right mind if you wanted to carry a longbow and a polearm, two stick-like objects on your back at the same time, well, Chancellor Palpatine, stick-like objects are my speciality. Disadvantage on everything you could possibly attempt while indoors. <laughs> 